Hey, good morning. Husky Bob came by yesterday, and he didn't come by empty-handed. Brought me a little something for dinner tonight. His garden is doing great. He said he has four different varieties of corn growing in there, and this is a new one he's never done before. He said it's really good, though. So I can't wait for dinner. Figured I'd get her all shucked up before I get back to work today, and hopefully beat the rain again. Funny thing, this morning I was gone for a walk through the trails there and something came back to mind again, which it often does pretty much every time I go through a walk through the forest. And I thought since so many of you are kind of new to property or you've just had property in the last few years, kind of like I was years ago, there's a lot of things you kind of learn over time, kind of like life lessons. And one interesting one, which I thought I'd share with you this morning, is about property lines and ownership, especially as it pertains to the forest. In this case, the trees in the forest. Let me show you the story. For those of you that have been with me a while, you may remember the video, but several winters ago, we had a big storm and there was a tree on my neighbor's property that fell across in the storm and caused about $800 damage to my boat because it was on my property on the other side. You may recall the video, I had a neighbor guy came down and it took us hours to try to get it off the boat without causing any more damage as well as the cleanup, right? Limbing it, fucking it, getting it all cleaned up and everything off of the ground. And of course, I gave the wood to my neighbor for his winter heat. Shortly thereafter, my neighbor came up and I happened to see him outside. And he's up at the property there and taking a look around and he said, geez, he goes, it looks like we lost a few trees in that storm. And I said, yeah, we did. In fact, he says, where's my cherry tree? Because he's looking around. I said, well, actually, your cherry tree fell on top of my boat. It caused a lot of damage. Thankfully, no hull damage, but a lot of damage nonetheless. My neighbor looks at me and says, well, where's my tree? And so I told him, I said, I had a neighbor that was out here for a day helping me clean it up, and I gave him the wood. You know, he was kind enough to help me. He needs wood for heat. Well, my neighbor was visibly upset, kind of almost demanding, saying that I had no right to give away his tree. I didn't know any better at the time, and I kind of figured he was right, it was his tree. Or was it? At least here in Ontario, and I think in a lot of other places, if you have a tree that falls across the property line, coincident with it coming across the property line, it now became my tree. So in fact, my tree fell on my boat. It wasn't his tree anymore, because it was on my property. True. But hey, like I said, you live and learn. I'll be looking forward to this tonight, and I'll let you know in a future video how good this corn was. In the meantime, we got a lot to clean up. Let's get at it. Cheers. A couple of weeks back, one of you good folks reached out to me, said you were thinking about buying a wood chipper and asked me, honestly, if I had to do it over again, would I spend the money and buy a wood chipper? And my answer is hands down, yes, for sure. I love having this chipper. There's kind of a gratification or a good feeling you get when you fell a tree, buck it up either for millwood or firewood, but you don't burn the limbs or leave them out in the forest. You chip them and then the chips are useful, whether they're for my trails or my gardens or my neighbor's gardens you kind of get everything out of that tree that you've dropped to the ground. So it feels good that way. The second reason is because burning is difficult. In fact, just three days ago, they finally took the burn ban off up here. We've had that ban on all summer, which means as you probably saw in previous years, I used to pile all of my shrubs and brush in my back clearing. And then I'd have to wait for that burn ban to lift. And right now you're still only allowed to burn overnight and it's got to be controlled, of course. And in fact, over a certain size, you have to get a permit. So it's a lot of hassle and cost. I mean, the permit's probably 50 bucks. I've never looked into it, 
I just basically you either continue to have to burn small amounts over time and only within those periods that they allow you to and not to mention you've got big piles of debris all over your property waiting to be burned this way you get some kind of an output or a finished product out of those limbs they get put to use so yes for sure I'd buy a wood chipper again That question I get a lot. GP, is it better to chip those branches after you've left them to dry? Or is it okay to chip them green? Or is it easier? And here's what I found over the last three or four years. If you've got it, it all depends a bit on your chipper. Because you'll see there are a lot of chipper reviews on YouTube and you'll see that the chipper constantly gets clogged. I'll be honest, after the four years I've had this unit, it has only ever clogged on me twice. And both times I was pushing green balsam fir through it. A lot of needles not the best stuff to chip and certainly not that great for the for the trails but hey you got branches you got branches you'll probably notice today that the stack that i left here a couple of weeks ago that's gotten all dried out or at least the leaves are is going through the chipper much easier than that big pile of fresh green stuff i laid down here about two days ago so yeah green stuff is going to have a trouble going through it's not so much that the wood has a problem it's that all the leaves start to get clogged down there and if your chipper is strong enough and built well enough it should shoot it out as you've seen today but yeah, a little bit more of a hassle trying to fight with it to get the leaves in there. Whereas those older limbs, they're going through nice and easy because the leaves are all brittle. Hope that answers the question. Let's go drop some on the trail and get back to work. It's getting hot.
Another question I get a lot, especially in the summer times, gravity fed or hydraulic infeed, which is better? My neighbor guy, as you know, has a Woodland Mills WC68. It's a hydraulic infield, works great. It's got a roller in there and it feeds that wood in at an adjustable rate that you determine. This guy here, it's gravity fed as you've noticed, but as you can see, works great. It doesn't have all the fancy features of the infeed, but I think what I would tell you is if you've got the money and you want a good quality chipper that's got a hydraulic infeed, buy the hydraulic infeed. If you don't and you're watching the pennies, get a gravity fed one. I've had it, I think, for at least four summers now, and like I said, it's only ever clogged on me twice. However, make sure you do your homework because there are a lot of different brands or makes of chippers, and you'll notice that whether they're made in Canada, the US, or abroad, they all look identical to this one. They follow virtually the exact same shape and size, dimensions, pretty much. However, if you watch those YouTube reviews, you'll notice that some brands tend to constantly clog all the time, and they'll tell you in those videos. So you know which brands to kind of be wary of. And like I said, if the price difference between the gravity fed and the hydraulic infeed is not too large, get the hydraulic infeed. When I bought this, there was a very, very big price gap between the two. Hope that's helpful. Well, like I said, I know chipping limbs is not the most exciting thing, but I do appreciate you sticking around today and I hope you found it helpful or at least a little entertaining. I got two full trailers out of this. I'm gonna take her back out in the forest do a little bit of raking and I'm gonna be done for the rest of the day. My gravel for the driveway is supposed to come this afternoon, fingers crossed. Have a great week with your families and please be kind to each other. Gord Potter, and I'll see you again on the next one. Cheers.